Welcome to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown. Today, I'm bringing back to you a very welcome repeat guest. We've got John Bell from the Veterans Administration to bring you some really timely updates on the Veterans Loan Program. If you're a veteran or you know one, you're going to be super excited for some of this news. And if you are a realtor, get ready to get your newsletter updated to reach more people. Enjoy the conversation, drop some questions or thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you on the other side. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fantastic. You know, just uh, selling some properties and keeping people calm. No big deal. Hey, I, we see some uh, inventory fly off the shelves for uh, for a change. So that's, that's good. The last couple of weeks, I think, have been... Uh, some positive news it looks like uh as of late but i you know I, I know it's individual market but certainly we've seen some movement well you know the good news is since it's stabilized in a lot of markets veterans have a chance fha first time buyers have a chance cuz sellers don't have the luxury of saying we have a thousand people fighting for our house now they have two or three offers and so they're getting a better look and of course north carolina like Tennessee, like Florida, we've got the jobs coming in. So there's a lot of opportunity. But then you look at Texas, which still has a lot of jobs coming in. But Austin has pulled back into a almost a buyer's market now because they are at four and a half months of inventory. So it's it's good to see that buyers aren't so out of weight with sellers. Because for me personally, I'm, I'm too old for an, an imbalanced market. I like buyers and sellers on the level playing field so that the negotiations feel fair and it hasn't felt fair during COVID. So this is actually a really good thing. And I don't, I don't complain about it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think if you grew up in finance uh, like myself, you know, the ebbs and flows just become static, right? I mean, every, every 10 years you're going to, uh, or eight to 10 years, Unfortunately, you're going to see these large swings, and it's it's just about the long game um, and protecting yourself. I can't tell you how many independent mortgage bankers, bankers that I talk to that I'm like, if you if you don't have a diversified portfolio, you're going to be in trouble at some point in time. And so that's been my big stick on the on the other side of the fence. Well, and it's, it's something I told the some young people the other day, because, you know, being middle-aged, you can talk about the young people. I said, you have an advantage right now because you think these markets and these changes to structural real estate are normal. So you'll just roll with it. Those of us that are old that have been through the cycles, we're just thinking, oh, oh God, here we go again. And so we have to work our way through it where they just kind of take off and run. So it's advantage young people. They'll They'll learn. <laughs> They, we won't tell them that part yet. <laughs> they, they too will learn. <laughs> <laughs> right. So a lot going on at the VA. We've got that temporary rule change to allow veterans to have the same flexibility as everybody else in the market. So yay to whoever drove that through. So it's good news. And my my curious question on that is, what are the chances that that becomes permanent? Or is the VA looking at this as a, let's see, how it goes. Let's see what happens in the market. What's the general perspective on that? So we know we have to continue to make uh, veterans competitive in the marketplace and the world has changed around us. And we, as a program, have been known to change with it. Uh, and this is another one of those changes uh, that where what we are going to do is learn on that fix long-term fix on what are the things that that need to be there from a guardrail standpoint so that the market doesn't go crazy um and that's kind of where where va really um we have the the benefit of being able to do that so the the idea here was look let's let's make sure above all else um, veterans are able to, to negotiate and pay the buyer broker uh, uh, agreements, but let's use this time over the next six months to learn what that what that means. Um, that gets us a little bit closer to the settlement um, piece as well, and you know start filling in the long term approach, which is which is a regulatory approach to to fix, to fixing it. 
And I think it's worth pointing out here to the, the viewers and listeners who have been reactionary irritated with the fact that the VA had to do a temporary rule lift. Let me remind y'all, our multiple listing service and the concept of cooperative compensation has been in place for decades and decades. So the VA did not need to have a way for veterans to pay outside of that because we were operating in a traditional style system. As that changes, that's where the rule lift came in. But there's also got to be an understanding that the goal of real estate agents and of the VA is that veterans not pay more than other people. This was to make sure they have options but are not paying excess. And so I just want to make sure that you guys understand that the the VA's goal is that veterans be able to get a mortgage and not pay excessive fees. And what real estate's looking at right now is not excessive. It's just different structure. And I look at it as a cooking show, whereas the ingredient of buyer agent compensation was previously baked into the cake. Now we're deconstructing the cake and the buyer agent compensation ingredient now sits outside of the other ingredients. So it becomes a different conversation. Do we do we want it? Do we not? What does it look like? And it's the VA is not the bad guys here. Bad guys here, y'all. You need to understand that. But we're working with an agency that has to move with the changes we're seeing because the settlement may not be done yet. Be understanding of that, too. This is round one, round two, round three, as we see more conversations around what organized real estate is going to look like can cause more changes. And that's what all of us have to be aware of so that when you, the practitioner, see changes that impact your veteran clients, you need to raise your hand and talk to your contacts who have resources inside the Veterans Administration, let us know what you see in the field, submit the comments, submit the anecdotes, because the VA wants to serve veterans. And the loan program, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, is the single best benefit our veterans have. It is the most efficient of the veterans' benefits. Because we're not going to talk about the other things that need to be improved. The VA program has done a good job. So had to toss that in there because there can be a lot of emotion going on as things change in the marketplace. So you also have some other things that are changing at the VA that could be beneficial to our veterans. Tell us about that, Mr. Bell. So Lee, before we get in there real quick, can I just pull on that, that string just one other, one other thing um, and, and say one thing about VA stands to make, to, to ensure that veterans are competitive. And while I'll tell you a story broke today in the Washington Post where VA was called one of the single greatest benefits um, in housing as, as well today. The problem, though, is no one wants to talk about the strength of the veteran program, not just about the benefits of low down payment, you know, no PMI, but also all of the things that we've been able to do and accomplish to make it competitive for you make it competitive for the industry, make it competitive where it's the product of choice for veterans. We want and need the real estate community to stand behind us and be proud of this program and to speak at, you know, about it in not just general terms, but we want you to use data to be able to tell that story of why you should use the VA loan and get and and why it's the strength of the benefit is not just those things, but it's also things like uh, time to close and the time for appraisals to get uh, you know the time it takes to get appraisals back. Six days is what we're averaging right now. Actually, I was on this podcast and Lee called me out and, and correctly did so in some areas, you know, where we needed to make sure that we were protecting veterans and not protecting veterans out of the benefit where appraisals were just taking too long. And so we went from 12 days for delivery to six days for delivery in the last year, year and a half, two years. Those are the type of things we want to arm you with so that you can talk in a way about the VA program that lenders can talk about the VA program and, and not just generalities. So, um, anyway, so I apologize. Got out of my soapbox. But you're right, though. And, and we actually mentioned earlier, young people may have an advantage as the market changes because they see things as normal. 
that the old guard doesn't. And that time frame on VA is one of those things, because if a realtor was trained by a broker who did VA loans 30 years ago, when you had to drive to the VA office and get that in writing COE certificate of eligibility from the grumpy lady at the cage, it took weeks and weeks. And now it is a very efficient process because we do have technology involved. So a lot of it goes to your perspective. And if you're a real estate pro, it is your obligation to have your information up to date so that you don't give bad information to a home seller who may look negatively on a VA loan if you're putting out old information. So just make sure you're up to speed on this because cutting in half that appraisal time is a benefit to the seller. It's a benefit to the veteran. And it means that we can keep things in a really reasonable time frame. That's a huge improvement. Of course, the improvement a lot of agents are looking for is the VA inspection process, which the reason the Veterans Administration does that, y'all, is to make sure the veteran's not getting a house that is a bad asset where they're going to be unsafe, where the living conditions won't be good. But we know there are some VA inspectors who have a personal grudge against the world, and they'll go in and pick a house to pieces to the point where the veteran and the seller are at odds and the transaction doesn't close. So where are we on updating those inspection requirements? So for example, a house that was built four years ago should, by its nature, have a much shorter list because you're not dealing with lead-based paint, you're not dealing with underground oil tanks, asbestos, lead pipes, aluminum side, and all of those things that are the cocktail of environmental issues that may exist on a 1951 house. Has the VA made any moves in those direction yet? Great question. And the good answer is yes. Uh, we are right in the middle of our regulatory process. So what that means is we went out with a regulation and asked the industry or actually the public and said, hey, what are the things about this process that you absolutely think we should change? Uh, and so we got quite a few comments back from that. We are now um, putting those comments, going through those comments and going back out with our regulation very soon to answer that. I will say this, we are trying to be as, as an industry, like from, from an agency standpoint, you know, Freddie, Fannie, FHA, the things that we can be alike on, we want to be alike on. The things that truly like where, you know, we've got active duty service members that are serving and they have, a you know, their family that's back at home and they get into their first home and we don't want the home falling down around them and them worried about that. That's one thing. A rail on the back porch. We hear you. Right. So we are listening. We're trying to listen. We're trying to take in that feedback. And I think that you will be pleased to what you see as we come out with through the regulatory process, what we're able to uh, what we're able to change. Uh, so just bear with us a little bit longer on the regulatory process. It normally takes two years. We are halfway in between that time frame at this point in time. So we're right at that one year mark. We're trying to um, speed it up as quickly as we can. But we got a lot of really good feedback. But with the overall goal of that's what we're trying to do. So we think that that very soon you will be able to see a more realistic um, NPR process uh, as, as well as uh, stipulations uh, like the industry. So does that mean that you'll talk to your friends at the FHA and you'll get their inspection requirements updated with yours? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, because that'd be awesome. I can only speak to VA and, and um, you know, but... Look, I, I got a dream. I got a dream, John Bell. I got a dream. I dream of a day when we don't have to end real estate, take two by fours and build a jury rigged handrail for a house just to shut up the inspector. <laughs> Because I think every agent worth their salts now has the rudimentary carpentry skills to build a very sad handrail out of two by fours. Here's what I will say. <laughs> I have never seen the agencies work as closely as we're working and aligned as we are right now. Um, I meet, just to let you know, when we talk about um, what we've done from a servicing standpoint, we're meeting with the agencies, the, the interagencies, the advocates, the, uh, the industry every week. 
So we're having weekly calls, um, hour long calls on this is what we want to do. What are you doing? And, and making comparisons and, um, and and trying to really work together. So I've, I've we've had monthly meetings before. We've had policy meetings before. We've had technology meetings before. But this is really transparent environment that we have seen that, that, that we've never seen. So um, hopefully you will get you will see the fruits of that labor. Well, and I'm grateful for that because that's what we're doing on the agent side. We're having to get updates pretty much weekly to see what latest information is coming out of the settlement and all the lawyers and how we can react to protect the consumer and make sure that realtors can continue to be a valid profession. So there's constant conversation going on. But since you talk about the interagency working together, I do think there's a really good statistic that agents should be aware of as they work with veterans, as they work with first-time buyers that are using either FHA, USDA, any of these programs, there is a very low foreclosure rate with the agency-backed loans because you guys also have a vested interest in keeping our veterans in their houses once they're in there because we know that if they get into a house with a VA loan and don't stay there, That could be worse for them over time, but your foreclosure rate's really low. Do you know the stat off the top of your head? Because I think it's a great piece of information to arm our agents with. Uh, Our foreclosure rate, uh, which is basically what what I look at, because at the end of the day, I want to make sure a veteran stays in a home. So there there are tons of things that happen. We call it a waterfall. And, And why we call it a waterfall are there are steps along the process um, of default. So say you miss 30 days, say you miss 60 days, say you're 90 days behind. So there there are steps in our waterfall all the way and uh, up to and including, you know, we have to go to foreclosure. But that is, we are historically less than 1% foreclosure rate for the program, which is one of the best in the industry, uh, you know, for any program, including conventional. Uh, so uh, we pride ourselves on that, uh, on that, you know, what options are there for our veterans, because it is just as important to keep a veteran in a home as it ever is to put them in one. Uh, and so you've got to have both, right? That keeps pricing down. It keeps veterans happy. It keeps the, the fabric of the communities. There have been numerous studies about how veterans help communities and, 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 and with their civic responsibilities and, you know, that we want to make sure that we honor that and um, give them every opportunity that they can to, to save a financial impact that occurs in their lifetime. And that can happen to anyone, by the way. You know, anyone can lose a job. Anyone can lose uh, um, income at no fault of their own. And there is no program out there, whether or not you're conventional, FHA, whatever you use, that can promise you that that won't happen. It's about what happens after that occurs, what options are available to them to help them along the process. So we just went, we just on May 31st, we announced a new program called our BASP program, servicing, it's our um, VA servicing purchase program, where we're working with servicers where if they have tried every other option and we can lower a, uh, the, the, a, a monthly payment because what was out there at the time, we talked earlier about, you know, uh, the historic differences in how the, um, how the market works, right? So ebbs and flows. We had never seen interest rates rise at the rapid pace that 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 they rose over a short a period of time like we did uh, uh, two years ago. We've never seen it in the industry do that. All of the programs that were available at the time from a default standpoint were built around that not happening. So what, what happens if you've got a culmination of payments that are past due and you've got to solve for those payments past due but when they start paying when a borrower starts paying again they are in a market where their taxes and their insurance have risen 35 percent where they um they when they go back to start paying they're now paying at a higher rate 
than what they were paying when they went into default. Because you, when you modify a loan, you're modifying it on a on on the current interest rate, not on the interest rate that you had when you went into default. So we needed a program that did both, and so that's what this program did um, does. So for about forty thousand of, of our veterans that we believe will qualify, it basically gives them one last opportunity to stay in their home. We will take that that loan on ourselves, work with our veterans give them a very low interest rate because they're already sitting in a low interest rate. At the time, these borrowers, you know, our veterans were at a two and a half to 3% interest rate. So we know we couldn't raise it, but it also helps the program long-term and as well as the industry. So it's kind of a win, win, win for everyone. Um, We are absolutely thrilled that we're able to get that off the ground and, and, and offer it. Uh, and, you know, we want to help as many veterans as we can. This is huge news. And I want to I want to talk to you, the real estate professionals, for a second about what John Bell just said. There are veterans that can get into this program to stay in their houses. You have to be the one that knows that. And here's why you have to know it. The person who is in default, who's lost their job and things have gotten really unsettled, They don't answer phone calls from the bank, but they might talk to you, their friend who's in real estate, and you can say, hey, talk to the VA. They have a new program that won't run you out of your house. You might be the one that gets them to return the phone call so they can take advantage of this program. You have to know that a lot of the foreclosures we saw during the Great Recession cycle happened because the homeowner just ghosted the bank. They didn't talk to them about options. They didn't look at the recast. They didn't look at what could be done with the default penalties. And a lot of banks really don't want to foreclose. In fact, I don't think any bank wants to foreclose. It's too expensive. And then you get in trouble with the feds and they don't want any of that. They want to work with borrowers, but a borrower has fear and pride that get in the way. You got to be the one that intercedes. Now, let me ask a question, John. If somebody is in real estate and they encounter a veteran who's behind on their note and they've dodged every phone call because that's just how it happens. What does the agent tell them to do next? Do they reach out to the VA? Do they reach out to their servicer? What's the next phone call? And tell them how to ask the questions that will get them towards this new program if the servicer maybe hasn't dealt with it yet because it's a new program. First or foremost, reach out for help. Reach out to anyone, right? Servicer, us, we are the only agency that can say they answer phone calls within 60 seconds, 60 seconds. And you're not getting a call center person. You're getting someone that is our subject matter expert to try to help you. And that is due to the dedication and support of our passionate staff that, that are there only because they want to serve veterans and they want to make the lives of veterans better. So. Just raise your hand. That's all we're asking. Raise your hand. Tell us what's going on. Let us see what we can do to help you. Uh, And and that's um, that's if you heard nothing else. Just raise your hand. I mean, remember, guys, if your veteran gets booted out of their house for foreclosure, where are they going to go? Rents have gone crazy. Now they're not going to be able to buy for a long time. Any equity they had has just gone back into the hands of the bank. If you help somebody figure out a pathway through, you are stabilizing that family, which stabilizes our community. And I I have to point out, one of the top things I see talked about on Instagram, and I would imagine on TikTok, although I don't do the TikTok, but all of these other platforms, people are up in arms about the amount of real estate that hedge funds are buying in communities. If you and your clients don't like that either, then think about how you can help a veteran stay in their house or how you can help the veteran get forward in the loan program. Tell your homeowners that there are ways to stop these problems. And it all exists because these are citizen-focused programs. And if you don't like the federal government, okay, that's fine. Get that out of your head. Look at the programs that do work to help the citizens, especially those who've served this country. The answers are out there. Don't hide from it. Reach in and get it. Now, John, you also mentioned one of the issues we're watching. It's the the coming storm that some people are already worried about. Other people seem oblivious to. 
And that is the cost of insurance and what that's going to do to the average homeowner who has to have insurance because it's a requirement of their mortgage, but the cost are starting to get out of hand. What's the VA looking at as far as how we manage this change to payments that's coming and what's our what's our goal? I mean, I know the goal is that people can still afford their houses, but what's the plan? Do you have one yet? I think that uh, the the biggest thing that I'm trying to uh, uh, to help with is from an agency standpoint, from the government standpoint, we've got to work together to solve this. Uh, this is not a VA problem. This is not an FHA problem. This is Everybody. not a consumer lending problem. This is an everybody problem. And so um, you've got, and at the same time, it's a triple hit, right? You've got HOA dues that are going up. You've got hazard insurance and, and, and insurance going up, but you also have taxes going up at the same time. But what you're not seeing necessarily are values in those particular areas. So the cost of taxes are, are go, going up, but your values aren't going up as, as much as you would uh, like to see them. So all of that creates bigger longer term um, problems, especially when we're still trying to manage, which is what VASP was all about. We're still trying to manage the issues that occurred during COVID and, and really try to move forward. So I think that uh, we've got to do something more proactive. We've got to make sure we've got to inform buyers when they're purchasing a property as to making sure they have enough money to cover the differences in the cost. Because Look, it helps no one uh, to have borrowers that are in properties that just can't afford to be in properties. Doesn't help the rural, realtor community, doesn't help the, the lending community, and it definitely doesn't help the veterans themselves that are purchasing those properties. So uh, we're trying to work with the other agencies. We're trying to get smarter from a, from a data standpoint. There's not one day I don't have some type of data call about how do I gain access to insurance costs and you know holistically across the nation so i can superimpose those costs onto a model that we have called um we have this uh emergency uh model that we built and basically it's if i have a tornadoes that happen in tornado alley or floods that happen on the coast what is what's going to be the financial impact to the borrower if that if that happens We've got to get smarter in the way that we do things and look at not only not only what the climate or what the, um, you know, what the emergency that's causing it. We also need to look at what's the financial impact of that um, happening. And so we're really trying to build out these models and, and, and um, more information on how to overcome them. I think it's just the. It's the coming conversation that we should be having right now. I know that when I personally talk to a buyer, if their comfortable payment is $1,200, then I tell them we got to do our best to shop you in the $1,000 range so that you have a buffer for the possibility of future insurance increases, the possibility of future property tax increases, because those are going to be things that are out of your control, even though we'd all love to have control over it, we can't. And for anybody who's listening to this, if you don't live in Tornado Alley, you're not in a hurricane zone, you don't see wildfires, you're thinking, why does this impact me? Remember, friends, insurance is going to be spread out over the population. So it's a dilution of risk that everybody bears a little bit. And in other areas, they might carry more. But you have to have insurance because you never know where the next disaster is going to hit, whether it's a personal disaster for you or it's area wide. and I think the best description I ever heard from an insurance pro was that if it rains where you live, it can flood. And since we learned that during Hurricane Harvey in specific, you start realizing that the insurance, you think maybe if only Florida should be punished with high insurance, actually it can hit anybody at any time. So just be be aware of that as you talk to your borrowers. And when I mentioned the hedge funds, just remember, anytime somebody gets foreclosed on, you're just opening the door for a hedge fund investor to pick up another piece of real estate in your community. So we want to focus on helping people make good, smart decisions so they can stay put and keep the hedge funds out. And since y'all keep talking about it, I'm going to keep reminding you that's a personal way you can be beneficial 
and you don't just have to scream on social media. Okay, so if somebody were wanting to stay up to speed on all of these changes that are coming from the VA where they can read the circulars, where do they sign up to get those newsletters? Because not every lender does VA. Not every agent wants to read the information, but I have at least a half a dozen nerds out there that want to subscribe. So can they get this information direct from the VA? They can. Uh, we, we have a subscription service, um, it, you know, that, uh, that you can sign up on. Just go to our website. You know, there's there's tons of information there. You can go, you can sub subscribe, any type of policy changes, anything like that that comes out. Um, you'll you'll be able to uh, to get that information directly and not have to worry about going to the website again. You know, just uh, but uh, we also have. We instituted over this past year what um, what we call our um, service now tickets, uh, and so that has been so extremely helpful because what that allows us to do is, let's say you got an appraisal that is, I don't know, past the time that it should be, you can actually put in a ticket, uh, and we track those tickets as to what those, you know, how long it's taking, who's, uh, you know what appraisers assigned to it, all those kind of things. And so that's for COEs, that's for uh, appraisals, that's for any part of our process. And what that allows us to do is know every month, what should we be concentrating on because we're get, because what uh, amount of traffic is coming through nationally uh, and what are people calling about and what are our issues that we need to resolve? It's been extremely helpful for us to be proactive and something you don't hear from the government agencies much, right? About how do we become more proactive and how we respond? So we are, we're all in on this, pardon my Navy uh, phrase, but, uh, but we're all in to improve our process and our procedures. I did have a wonderful real estate friend who probably 90% of his business is VA loans. That dude is straight veteran, hardcore worker. He wanted me to ask a question if I ran into you. So I'm just going to ask you. He said, when is the VA going to do something about the travesty that is Tidewater? So let me just let me just hand that to you from a veteran <laughs> The travesty that is Tidewater. Wow. He and, hates and, Tidewater. Obviously, he, he's encountered some issues in the past. Th this is the first time it got flipped on me. Wow. Normally, we are uh, on the other side of, of, of that where people applaud us for Tidewater. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Did he, did he explain why he hates the Tidewater product? No, it was just a high level of frustration. So I can only assume that he had a couple of loans that did not go well and that there was a, a tangle in the system somehow. First I'm hearing about, can you please have him contact me? I certainly will. I'll have him submit a service now ticket and then you guys can track it in your system and you'll track a response rate and everybody will be happy. Sounds <laughs> great. But wow. I want to out, if you're a real estate pro and you don't know what Tidewater is, this is a good reason to reach out to your preferred lender who is heavy in the VA process because that's a specific process inside the veterans loans. And it's good to make sure your lenders know the veterans process really well so they can take care of our veterans when they want to buy a house. So, John, is there anything All else? Can, okay. I, can I just say one other thing on the top? All Tidewater does is it says, so let's say the uh, the appraiser gets the um, sales contract and the appraiser looks at the sales contract and says, whoa, we're 40,000 over what I'm showing this thing's worth. So then they reach out to the lender and they say, I need some comps or you to, to allow me to, to kind of understand where the disconnect is. That's all Tidewater is. It doesn't stop the process. It doesn't, you know, doesn't stop the value from being done, nor does it stop from the NOV being issued, the notice of value, nor does it stop a reconsideration of value from happening. So we've got tons of things in the pipeline, you know, that are after Tidewater would be initiated. So that's why I'm saying that's the first time someone's hit me on the other side of the fence. So I don't want Tidewater. So well, I mean, if you remember in a market where you have heavy multiple offers and bidding wars, it the number can be way off from the comps. 
Of course. Due to the weirdness, and there's no other word for it, of the real estate market since the COVID era started, I don't think anybody's ever experienced a run-up like this. The bidding wars have been crazy. So it could just be a hangover from some bidding war situations. But you should always remember this, real estate pros. You should have a data set to defend any offer you write. And if the offer is above the comps, you should have a lot of data that say these closings were at X percent of value, that you've got data to support your offer. You don't just write an offer and go and see what happens, because that's when you wind up with a heartbroken buyer and a frustrated seller and a loan that's not going anywhere because the bank has to protect their value. So just do a CMA when you write an offer and turn it over to the bank if there's a question. And then you've given something to defend your offer. And Lee, one more thing. Remember, veterans, at this point in time, we have never seen so many veterans are, that are able to put down large down payments. Right now, 20% of all of our veterans are putting down a down payment. And um, that's the highest that we've seen, as well as... It, they have more reserves than they've ever had, well, at least in the last 12 to 15 years. So don't just automatically think because you've got a 40000 difference between appraised price and sales contract that your veteran can't bring in that difference. They if may they choose to. do what? I'm sorry. If they, if they choose to. If they choose to. Sure. Right. But they have the ability and now they have the ability to to compete from a from a buyer's agent side of the house and a and a listing agent side of the house they can compete like everyone else so um just give them a chance give them an opportunity don't check the box if there's anything that lee always hears from me don't click the box except agency funding i can't speak for fha but or usda but definitely except va but i'm just kidding you, you you should be accepting all offers uh, because at the end of the day, um, who knows what someone has uh, to, to be able to bring to the table. Yeah, don't make assumptions. The only time we tell a seller not to check the VA box is if they are in a cash only kind of a house that is not in the remotest way going to go past the inspection process. That's a different situation than the five-year-old vinyl village house that heard from their agent that the VA process is a pain. It's two different things. And as a pro, don't make assumptions. And I love that you point out too, there is a misconception that every VA loan is automatically zero down from somebody who does not have a penny to their name. They just happen to have served. How about we all don't make assumptions about people and we just talk to them about what their options are and let them make their own choices. John, what else can you tell our people that they should know? What's Is there anything coming soon that we should know about? Or in general, just keep your eye on things because with weekly phone calls, we could see improvements roll out on a more frequent basis than we've ever seen. Well, you know, we still owe some things uh, that we started to work on at the beginning of the year, but because of VASP and because of the, the NAR settlement work, uh, you know, we had to, to refocus opportunities. And, and so, Look, we're going to continue to rebuild our process from a from a technology standpoint. Uh, our hope is is that we are using more data and um, and information flowing back and forth. So we're going to know um, more about VA lending than we have ever known in the past in, in the next two years, uh, and um, that's going to be exciting for us because. We've got now a 15 person training team. We've never had more than two uh, on staff. We now have 15 um, and that's to help us work with the real estate industry, work with the lending industry, work with our veterans to make sure that they're informed and that you all have the tools that you need to help us tell a story. Okay, so that leads me to a question I didn't have prior, but you've been on my show before, you know how this goes. If you have training staff, does that mean a state association of realtors, for example, the North Carolina realtors, could request a trainer from the VA to come to a meeting at the association to discuss and educate members on the VA program? 
We have always had that opportunity, but it gives us the, uh, we now have more people to, that are available at the times that you need them available. Which is uh, so easier for you to say yes then. I think it's a 100% great question. And there are, probably have been times where we just didn't have enough people to be able to attend or to, to, to give that type of training. So, um, so yeah, we, we, we certainly have staff that, are, that can help with that. So if you are watching this and you think this would be great information for your fellow realtors, tell the education director in your association to reach out to the VA because one of the advantages, if they're able to say yes to your calendar, is that this is not a specific bank talking about the program, which some members may just blow it off because it's not their favorite lender. When you bring in the resource from the actual program, then any affiliated lender could be in the room to, first of all, learn for themselves, but also be available to service your clients and create a, a, a non-competitive atmosphere that just helps us serve our clients better. So September and October are the big state convention meeting months. Why don't you reach out and, and put the VA into an hour slot and help more realtors help more veterans. John Bell, thank you so much for everything that you're doing to be proactive at a time when we desperately need you guys to be proactive so we can all keep serving our veterans who have served us so well. I really appreciate all that you're doing with the realtors to help us. Lee, right back at you, because again, I will I will say it, you're never, uh, you never shy away from the hard questions. And I appreciate that. Keep, well, keep, I do like I flustered keep, you on Tidewater, so I'm going to thank that friend of mine because that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, friends, if you have questions for the VA, you can drop it in the comments. You can direct message me. You can also go to va.gov. You can also sign up for the newsletters, submit your service now tickets. There's lots of ways to reach out. Don't sit quietly by and fuss if something's wrong reach out because as you can hear, there is a drive and a desire to make things better. So you can be a part of that. Subscribe for more and we'll see you next time.